starting a new chapter today. It's on chemical systems and equilibrium. And the, the first thing we're going to look at is the idea of kinetic equilibrium, which is that reactions can occur in two directions at the same time. And um, when those two reactions achieve the same rate, they're both still going, but they even out so that there's no macroscopic change in the in observable. If you, were, if you could shrink yourself down to the size of an atom, though, you would see that there's a forward reaction taking place and also a backward reaction, both of them taking place at the same time. One good analogy we can use to help explain this idea is the idea of a ping pong game, where uh, at the outset you have two players of equal skill playing with ten ping pong balls on the, uh, on the table. If the two players are of equal skill, at any given moment, if you were to take a snapshot of the game, you would see that there are five balls in play on one side and five balls in play on the other side, because both players have the same rate of returning the ping pong balls. If they have the same skill, they can both return the balls at the same rate. So even though they're both shooting balls as fast as they can, because they're both shooting them at the same rate at any given moment, they'll have equal numbers on both sides, even though it's a kinetic, um, it's a game that the where there's motion. Kinetic implies motion. So it's a kinetic equilibrium. You could have, say, a rate of uh, five balls per second going from left to right, and you could have five balls per second going from right to left. But in the end, if you took a snapshot at, at any given moment, you would have five balls in one court and five balls in the other. Now let's imagine for a moment that one player is better than the other. And the player on the left-hand side in this e example is better than the player on the right-hand side. So he manages to swat the balls away from his side faster than the player on the other side. At some point, um, he's going to have fewer balls on his side than the player who's not as good. And although you, would, you, might, be tempted to, uh, you might be tempted to think that, well, then why doesn't he bring all the balls over to the other side? Because sooner or later, he's going to get to the point where the number of balls that are available to hit are going to be the issue. They're going to slow him, they're going to keep him from going any faster because he's going to be hunting for the ball to hit. But there will be an inequality. It'll again be a, a kinetic equilibrium. But more balls are going towards that side until they establish an equilibrium where then it's going to happen that the rates are again e equal. So when the, guy ha when the weaker player has eight balls on his side, he's going to be able to maintain the same rate as the faster player who has only two balls on his side. Because the, the, the weaker player will have more balls to choose from flying around him, so he'll have, he'll have an easier time to hit something. And if we reverse it, if the good player is on the right side, it would, it would not take long to establish the same equilibrium the other way. So these three games depict what is called a kinetic equilibrium. It's an equilibrium where you can take a snapshot of it and it looks like there's a, something that's, there's no action, all you see is a, is a picture, but in fact, what we're trying to depict here is something that is happening continuously. In chemistry, equations that portray a kinetic, a kinetic equilibrium are written with double-headed arrows to show that change is occurring both ways at the same time. Uh, another equilibrium I chose to um, discuss is the equilibrium that occurs when you try to dissolve carbon dioxide in water. You get the um, carbonated water. Carbon dioxide is a gas, but you can get it to dissolve in water, so you get carbon dioxide, which is now aqueous. When you have an equilibrium, and this is a kinetic process, when you have an equilibrium, the rate of absorption of CO2 into the water will equal the rate of uh, desorption or of of, um, of its decarbonation, of it coming out of the solution. So this, you could see this in a pop bottle with a closed cap. If you were to take the cap off the bottle, now what's going to happen is you've reduced the pressure over the liquid and it allows some of the CO2 to move out of the aqueous solution into the gas phase. So the, I've, drawn, I've drawn the arrow in the direction of the gas phase to be larger to show that the equilibrium is shifted that way now and that the reaction going to the left is faster. If, on the other hand, we were to pressurize the system and add CO2, you would get the system to go this way. So according to the kinetic molecular theory, particles are always moving and collisions are always occurring in the system, even if, in cases of dynamic equilibrium, no macroscopic changes are observed. One example of, a, of an equilibrium 
where it's hard to observe a change is, uh, and I'm talking about dynamic equilibrium, is in the human body. We constantly eat food, which increases our body weight, but at the same time, every time we breathe out, we lose water and carbon dioxide. So every breath we take, if we could sit on a very sensitive balance, we would see that every breath we took caused a reduction in our body weight. Because as our metabolism proceeds, the CO2 that is metabolized in the form of glucose being oxidized and the lipids being oxidized produce CO2 as a byproduct, and we're getting rid of it constantly. So our body weight is constantly decreasing, and of course then we have these moments where we sit down and eat some food, and the body weight is increased again. So it's a dynamic equilibrium. If either one of these processes was to stop, it would create an imbalance, and our body weight would rather start to increase or decrease accordingly. One other thing we should uh, take note of is the fact that when the closer a reaction is to its equilibrium position, the more equally matched are the rates of forward and backward reaction. That's why it begins to establish an equilibrium. When the forward rate equals the, the reverse reaction rate, the, two rea the reaction stops changing. Although there is microscopically a uh, change occurring, we can't detect it. What we see is a, a metastable state where uh, if something, some new change is introduced, maybe the equilibrium will change again. But as far as we're concerned, nothing seems to be happening. At equilibrium in a dynamic system, the rate of forward and backward reactions Identical. When a reaction can achieve equilibrium in the forward or reverse direction, it is a reversible reaction. Now, one of the tools we use to discuss chemical reactions is an ice table. And I've taken the liberty of drawing a typical ice table where here they show the reaction of hydrogen gas with uh, iodine gas to form hydroiodic acid, all of them in the gas phase. If you were to start out with a, a mixture of one mole per liter of hydrogen gas and a one mole per liter of iodine gas and no hydroiodic acid because it's the beginning of the reaction, nothing has happened yet, uh, you could portray the reaction by showing what's called the change. So initial condition, change, and finally equilibrium condition. It's called the ice table that we use to do the calculations. During the change, let's say 78% of the hydrogen gets used up and as well 78% of the iodine. What would happen to the concentration of hydriotic acid? Well, it would be 1.56 because the stoichiometric coefficient is 1 to 2. So for every one mole of iodine used, two moles of hydriotic acid would appear. So this is the change. That's why this is minus because it's decreasing. This is plus because it's increasing. Then once the reaction is over at equilibrium, you have a steady state concentration of hydrogen of 0.2 moles per liter. Uh, 0.22 moles per liter of iodine and 1.56 moles per liter of hydroiodic acid. And if you wanted to show the uh, equilibrium constant for this reaction at this particular temperature, you would state K is equal to the concentration of products over the concentration of 